Handbrake is the best free compression tool for YouTube. I'll show you how to use it, but I also want you to know you may not need it. In order to eat a loaf of bread, you can't shove the entire thing in your mouth. You have to cut into small slices and then chew each piece a dozen times before you'll be able to digest it. Likewise, videos played on the internet are not watched all the way through instantaneously. So platforms like YouTube feed only what is allowed by the internet speed available on that viewer's device. It's important to understand this because depending on what you're uploading, you may not need to bother with the extra step of compressing your videos at all. Stick around while I explain and ignore anyone who timestamps this video thinking this is unimportant. Compression for the internet and YouTube in particular is video's equivalent of cutting it up into small parts so that it can be replayed online in real time and hopefully still looking as good as when it left your editing software. When you upload any file, compressed or otherwise, YouTube automatically compresses it for you at 30 frames per second, whether you like it or not, and whether you've filmed it in 25, 24, or whatever frames per second. No, that doesn't affect slow motion. It does this to its own standard and makes a number of different compressed copies. This has a number of advantages for YouTube in terms of storage and bandwidth use. It's good for them, and it's good for viewers, mostly. When Stacy plays it on her iMac 27 inch on a high speed broadband connection, she gets the best available version. Let's say it's a YouTube compressed 4K video because she has a device that can display it and 100 megabits per second to feed it to her without even a sniff of a delay. But when Bob hits play on the same video while watching on his smartphone with only one bar of reception, he might only be getting five megabits per second or less. In that case, YouTube doles out the crappy 240p version and on his small screen, he probably won't notice the artifact or compressed audio. So the first thing is that you don't automatically need to compress your videos if YouTube is doing it for you. If it's becoming a barrier to you producing regular video because it's the one thing you don't understand or have time for just yet, don't bother. I'm sure this used to be more of a problem than it is now. I remember files not loading quickly if they were too big, but I've tested this with a raw bit of footage that was nearly two gig and YouTube's compression worked well enough to play instantly on my iMac 27 in 1080p and instantly on my phone in 340p, which was on two bars of reception. Was there a loss in quality? Probably. Could I tell? No. Now, I know that's not very scientific, but try a massive file yourself and watch on a few different devices and see if that's true. Make sure you set any uploads to private, obviously, so you don't publish a bunch of random videos to your channel. Because the whole point of YouTube's compression is to serve up the right video to the right device for the given bandwidth, it's not a cinematic experience, but it's pretty good most of the time. So why would you use Handbrake and compress any videos first? because this gives you control of the bit rate and size, which helps with the upload speed, especially when batching a load of videos. Depending on your connection, videos of a couple of gig can take 25 to 30 minutes to upload, during which time it could time out and you need to start over again. But Handbrake not only reduces that size, it can batch a number of them and compress them without losing any quality. You can set it up and do something else. Over in Handbrake, the setting looks like this. Drag your huge file in or hit open source in the top left and select the file you want. In the tabs in the middle, hit video and then click on the preset downloads. Go to general and hit very fast 1080p 30. Now back in the middle of the screen, set the average bitrate or kilobytes per second to the YouTube recommended 8 megabits per second or 8,000 kilobytes per second for 1080p. Leave everything else on default and hit start. While that's doing its magic, you can drag in another file or use the open source option in the top left and then hit add to queue. A little red one will appear and you can then keep adding to it. Handbrake will automatically work through all of them using the same settings. Quick note on bitrate before I wrap this up, it's the bitrate that is crucial in all of this. Remember what I said at the beginning about trying to eat a slice of bread at a time rather than the whole loaf? It's the bit rate that determines how large each of those slices is. The higher the bit rate, the more complex the color and contrast resolution. But at the same time, the larger the file and the larger each slice of bread per second that the internet needs to have. When it comes to internet speeds, that can vary widely depending on the situation and device and there cannot be a single answer. So start with 8,000 kilobytes per second or eight megabits per second as it's called, just adjust down to no less than 5,000 or five megabits per second and you'll be more than safe while keeping the quality high. If that was helpful, why not subscribe? Or if it wasn't helpful, just Hit like and subscribe anyway, because Ed's also on his channel and he's better looking, younger and funnier than me.